Hey everybody, Ash here for the Triple S League with some tips and tricks for fighting bosses in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Bosses are really tough in this game, some of them feel impossible at first, but once the game kind of clicks for you and you figure out how to approach boss fights, it becomes a lot of fun and I actually get pretty excited when I'm about to encounter a new boss. But I've got about a dozen specific tips that I wanted to pass on from my many, many hours playing this game. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you everything I wanted to show you or everything I'm describing because some of my recordings got corrupted. Hopefully my descriptions will be good enough and I, I do have a lot of good footage as well. Now I'm going to assume that you're familiar with how combat works in this game, the relationship between vitality and posture, that kind of a thing. If you'd like a more general combat guide, I'd be open to producing one. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you'd like something like that. But anyway, here are my tips and tricks specifically related to boss fights. Number one, never carry excess XP or money into a boss fight. This may seem obvious, but sometimes you don't think of it right off the bat. Every time you die, you lose half your XP towards your next skill point and half your money. So you don't want to be carrying any that you can't afford to lose. Chances are you're going to die quite a few times before figuring out how to beat some of the bosses, especially the really tough bosses. So you want to spend some time preparing beforehand. Go farm some XP, get yourself up to the next skill point, visit a vendor, buy some stuff, buy spirit emblems, or actually the best thing you can do is buy coin purses. You pay a bit of a premium on them, but then your money is safe. It's basically like putting it in the bank, and it's better than losing the money. So if you don't have anything you need to buy right at the moment, coin purses are a good idea. Tip number two, always eliminate the regular enemies before focusing on the boss. There's only a few situations where this applies. The generals usually have a few lower level enemies around, or when you're fighting, for example, this Seven Ash and a Spears guy in the Ash and a Reservoir, this area is full of enemies when you first spawn in. You want to be getting rid of them because you don't want them to be pestering you while you're focusing on the boss fight. In this particular case, most of them would be far enough away that they won't bother you unless you get too close. But that leads us into my next tip, which is you choose the battleground. As you can see, I've led this Ash and Spears guy down the steps and into this more open area rather than fighting him up by the temple where space is more constricted. Another example, when you're fighting the Lone Shadow Longswordsman, you want to be in control of where the fight is taking place. You don't want to let him corner you in this narrow hallway. If you can avoid it, keep it to this more open area as much as you can. I sometimes utilize that hallway to heal or get away from him for just a quick sec but then always uh, quickly run past him back into the more open area. But the bottom line is you want to be in control of where the fight is taking place. The boss will follow you, so you really have a lot of control over the actual location where the fight is taking place. There are some limits, though. If you get too far away from where the boss originally starts out, the boss fight will actually reset, and you don't want that. Number four, always try to stealth backstab the boss before engaging in actual face-to-face -face combat. Not every boss can be stealth backstabbed, not every boss can be snuck up on, but many of them can, and there are some situations where it doesn't look like you can pull off the backstab, but you actually can with a bit of creativity. For example, fighting a Snake Eyes Shirafuji here, when you first get to this area, you're right in front of him, he sees you right away. What I actually did is I ran past him across the bridge and into the gun fort and found the next sculptor idol there, so that became my spawn point. And then I made my way back and was able to approach him from behind and get the backstab in before engaging him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Or her. I actually suspect that these Snake Eyes enemies are women, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, be a little creative in how you approach the fight, and you might be able to get that stealth backstab in where it's not immediately obvious that you can. Tip number five, don't try to win right away. Of course, you're trying to win the fight. But what I mean by that is during your first few attempts at fighting the boss, you're not trying to win the fight, you're trying to learn how to win the fight. You're trying to learn the patterns, learn what the openings are, learn which perilous attacks they use. You also want to learn things like when is it safe to heal. You're vulnerable while you're using your healing gourd, so you want to make sure that you use it during an opening in the fight where you're not going to take some serious damage and basically nullify your attempt to heal yourself. Don't be afraid to experiment a bit, Equip different loadouts, change up your strategy. Every boss is different. They have different weaknesses. They have different strengths. Some of them are very vulnerable to posture damage. Some of them are not. The things like that are really good to know. Plus, you'll just start to recognize the subtle movements that indicate what a boss is going to do next, and you'll be able to respond to what they do with lightning precision. So don't get frustrated if a boss is taking a long time. Recognize that you, you almost have to approach it as its own game within the game. 
Each boss fight is like its own mini game that requires some practice to master, and it's incredibly satisfying once you've done so. But the other thing you want to recognize is when you're in over your head. Sometimes you'll encounter a boss that you're just not strong enough to beat yet. Now that doesn't mean that they're impossible to beat. In reality, you can pretty much beat any boss at any time if you know exactly what to do. But you have to decide, you know, is it worth your time to try and beat this boss right now? Or are you going to go take a different path, uh, explore a different area, level yourself up, and then come back when you're stronger? So if you find that you are taking a ton of damage with every hit, but you seem to barely even scratch the enemy when you attack them, it's probably a good idea to back off at that point, level yourself up, and come back later. You can also do things like level up your prosthetics, or even find additional prosthetic tools. But that brings me to my next tip, which is try not to rely on consumables, and this includes your shinobi prosthetic. The problem with using consumables on boss fights is that you eventually run out, and if you're making many, many attempts at it, you might find that you just don't have that thing that you were relying on. I can't count the number of times that I would run out of spirit emblems. Ultimately, it's up to you how you want to approach it. I try not to rely on consumables. Now, there are some bosses where having certain consumables is almost a necessity. For example, when you're fighting the, the sort of undead and terror bosses, having Divine Confetti is almost essential. You do barely any damage without it, plus you probably want to be using your Pacifying Agent to avoid terror buildup. In those cases, I would say practice a few times first before you start using your consumables. In the case of Divine Confetti, it's not easy to come by. There are only a few enemies that, that drop it, and so you kind of have to grind for a while to, to get your hands on it. So I'll typically practice a few times without it first, until I'm fairly sure I can beat the boss, and then I'll start using the Divine Confetti and actually do some damage. Now you could take this approach with other consumables too, for example, if you want to use shurikens, and you know, shurikens are, are really effective against bosses like Lady Butterfly when she flies up in the air and lands on her little spider strands. There are other shinobi prosthetics that are effective against certain bosses. So you may decide you want to use them, just make sure that you know what you're doing, manage your resources well, and give it a few practice rounds before you really start hammering them and using those consumable items. The next tip I have kind of relates back to what I was talking about about practicing, but you want to make a conscious decision about how you're going to go in for the kill on each boss. You basically have two options. You can whittle down their vitality until it's at zero, and then you can basically do a death blow, or you can break their stance. There are pros and cons to each approach. If you decide to go for the breaking their posture, this can really shorten the fight and increase your chances of survival, but some bosses have a really good posture, and it's nearly impossible to break their stance, at least until they get down to low vitality. And uh, keep in mind that the lower a boss's vitality is, the slower their posture will recover. So I typically take one of two approaches. If I feel like I can break the boss's stance, for example, fighting Genichiro Ashina, I take this approach. I basically play really defensively until I've whittled his health down to about half, and that's the point where I've noticed his posture recovery is a lot slower, and then I'll start to turn up the aggression, get in the hits where I can, really start to try and deflect his attacks whenever I can to build up that posture damage and then go in for the death blow. In this case, it's quicker and safer than trying to get his vitality down to zero. And in some cases, like the long arm centipede giraffe, his posture is a joke. If you rapidly deflect all his attacks when he's swinging his claws at you, you can break his posture in a few seconds, which makes him really easy to beat. Some bosses though, like this Ashina Elite, I have found that it's very difficult and dangerous to try and break his stance. And so the approach I take with him is just to whittle down his vitality until it's at zero. Now you may take a different approach, do whatever suits your playstyle, but it's a good idea to develop a strategy and kind of stick to it and have a plan and don't just kind of attack blindly until that red dot appears. Always be keeping an eye on your enemy's vitality meter and their posture meter. And remember that you can deliver posture damage even if they're blocking your attacks. While we're on the topic of posture though, make sure you're always managing your own posture during the fight. Sometimes it's easy to forget about the fact that you also have a posture bar, and if the enemy breaks your stance, you're left incredibly vulnerable to attack. If it happens right at the end of a series of attacks, it's usually not a big deal, but if it happens in the middle of sort of a flurry of attacks the enemy is throwing at you, that can be devastating to your health. So always be keeping an eye on your posture bar. Remember that guarding helps you recover your posture. So even if your enemy is nowhere nearby, hold that guard stance, that'll help you recover your posture. Also, your posture will recover faster if you have higher health. If your vitality is less than half, you'll definitely want to use your healing gourd as soon as it's safe to do so. 
and that'll let you recover your stamina a lot better. Also, grab the Ichimonji and the Ichimonji double combat arts uh, as soon as you can. These are great for boss fights, they deliver a good deal of posture damage and can uh, help you get that death blow in, but they also recover your posture when you use them. Plus, they stun the enemy for a minute, so it's, it's a good way to recover in the middle of a battle. It does posture damage, it gets the enemy to back off for a second, and it helps you recover your stance, so it's kind of a win-win-win. You do have to be careful when you use it, because there's a long wind-up to it, so you want to make sure you're not leaving yourself vulnerable to attack, but if you can find a space to use it, it can be really helpful. And by the way, keep an eye out for animations that indicate your enemy is stunned. I really noticed this with the Headless Ape, which... Unfortunately, I can't show you because that's one of my recordings that got corrupted. But he would go into this state every once in a while uh, where he was just sort of sitting still and wavering a little bit and not attacking at all. And I, he was very vulnerable to attack. I could get half a dozen attacks in before he recovered and got back into the battle. He wasn't posture broken. He wasn't just staggered, but he was actually stunned for some reason. I don't know why it happened. I'm not even sure if it happens with any of the other bosses, but at very least with the Headless Ape, there's that state he goes in where he, he's very vulnerable to attack for a few seconds, so make sure you take advantage of that, and also keep an eye out for that kind of a thing uh, with the other bosses as well. A few final notes. Play defensively. Remember that most attacks can be guarded or deflected, even things that don't seem like they should be able to be, like projectiles or really humongous spear attacks, or the Guardian Ape swinging his claws at you. Almost everything can be deflected. Of course, watch for those perilous attacks and respond accordingly, and especially learn when to avoid the grab attacks, because if they get you with a grab attack, it's impossible to avoid damage, and some of them can be pretty devastating. Circling to the left versus circling to the right around your enemy can actually make a difference. As you can see with his Ashina Elite, I circle around him and then dodge when he uses his attack. I found that when I was circling counterclockwise, I was much more likely to be hit by his attack. So I started circling clockwise and was much safer using the exact same dodge move. So keep that in mind. In some situations, it may help to just try going in the other direction. Finally, and I hate having to include this one because it's mostly an issue of camera management, which I really think shouldn't be a factor we have to worry about, but it is. Try to stay away from walls and corners. If you get your back to a wall, your camera view can get completely screwed up and then you can't see what's going on and that makes it very easy for the boss to kill you. So if you get yourself into this situation, get out of it as soon as you can. Try to get back out into the open, have your enemy against the wall, and you'll have a much easier time. I talked about this in my review of the game. It's my one major beef with the game, is how the camera works in enclosed spaces. I really feel like they should have come up with a solution so we didn't have to worry about this. But in any case, it is an issue with the game currently, so you do need to make sure that you're managing your camera and making sure that you don't get into a position where you can't see what's happening. So those are my tips for fighting bosses in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. If you've got any additional tips and tricks that you'd like to add, please put them in the comments below. We'd appreciate reading them. And if you'd like to see any other guides about this game, please let me know. I love Sekiro. I'd love to make some more content for this if you're interested in it. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and sub if you appreciated this video, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, sub, and hit that notification bell, and then check out some of these other videos. Find the link to our Discord server and other important stuff in the description below.